Good morning, friends, colleagues, dedicated partners in conservation, and passionate supporters of our parks. On behalf of the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, Bureau of State Parks, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all here today. I'm John Hallis, Director of State Parks, and we are gathered here in this wonderful natural and culturally rich landscape, high above the mighty Susquehanna River, to make a historic conservation legacy announcement one that will expand the inheritance of all Pennsylvanians, an inheritance for the public's use, enjoyment, edification, and quality of life gained on our public lands. To mark this momentous occasion and to announce this tremendous investment in our state parks, we are extremely honored to have Governor Tom Wolf and DCNR Secretary Cindy Adams Dunn joining us today. Also joining us to make this important announcement is our strong conservation partner, President and CEO of the Lancaster Conservancy, Phil Wenger, and providing his steadfast leadership as the Chairman of the House Appropriations Committee and serving the 94th Legislative District, State Representative Stan Saylor. Thank you, Governor, Madam Secretary, and gentlemen, for your vision, commitment, and leadership to DCNR that brings this event to fruition today. Gathering us in this special place, gathering us in this special place that will have meaning, not only in just the present, but for generations to come. A state park's power and meaningful impact on our lives resides not only in the power of the place, with its stewarded collection of natural and historical attributes, which are guaranteed in Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, the Environmental Rights Amendment. The power also exists and is additive in our lives in large part because, taken together, our parks are the greatest collection of democratizing spaces held in the public trust in the Commonwealth, affording us the freedom and opportunity of pursuing some of life's most essential pursuits. I'm trying to keep my hat on. For building and strengthening relationships with one another, sharing priceless moments, making lasting memories with friends and family, discovering outdoor recreation and direct access to the magnificent resources our parks contain. In a time when differences and divergence are all too often and unnecessarily called out and amplified in an attempt to divide us, our parks are a common ground to stand on together. In our conservation and outdoor recreation world, we cannot do it alone. Another power our parks contain are the partnerships and professional relationships they engender that are necessary to be successful with our mission and our mandate. Through the service of state parks professionals at the core of our essential work, we can't do it alone. We don't have to. In partnership with collaboration with conservation volunteers, the Pennsylvania Parks and Forest Foundation, and our many friends groups, the Fish and Boat and Game Commissions, our sister uh, bureaus within DCNR, state, county, and local elected officials. And when I say sister bureaus within DCNR, that's the Bureau of Recreation and Conservation, the Geologic Survey, Administrative Services, Facility Design and Construction, and the Bureau of Forestry. And specifically for this new park, the Susquehanna Riverlands Conservation Landscape Team and the Lancaster Conservancy. The power of all these partnerships and relationships delivers the exemplary public service contained within our state parks. A lot of energy and commitment and work goes into managing and maintaining our state parks, and certainly deciding to create and develop three new state parks requires a, a degree of vision and leadership to the effort that is extraordinary. And someone that has put forth that leadership, energy, and commitment, and who has worked tirelessly during his time in office, providing humanity and dignity for all in his governance, is Governor Tom Wolf. He's provided. He's worked tirelessly to improve our quality of life, our commonwealth, and our public health and safety. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Governor Tom Wolf to the podium. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Governor. So thank you very much, John, um, and welcome everybody to this great new state park. Um, you're looking out over the Susquehanna River to Lancaster County, but look at this weather today. This is Pennsylvania in the fall, and this is a 
If there's anybody from out of town, this is a typical fall day in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. It's a great day. So thank you for, for being here, and thank you for, for joining together to celebrate this, this great, great event. Um, our state park system is something that we really take seriously, and I think all Pennsylvanians are very proud of. Today, well, up until today, the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources manages uh, or managed 121 state parks all around the, the Commonwealth. Uh, together with the DCNR's state forest system, that represents one of the largest, the largest expanses of public lands in the eastern United States. And I think I can say this without any fear of uh, uh, challenge that our state parks are among the finest in the nation. Yeah, go on. <clears throat> they are. So I am honored to add to that legacy. We've secured funding to create three new state parks, which brings the total during my administration to four state parks. Now that might not seem like a whole lot to you, but it's the most new state parks opened in Pennsylvania since the 19... 60s, late 60s, early 70s. So uh, I'm proud of that. Four state parks. <clears throat> and it's something that, that we really need to, to showcase. Uh, Mark Platz is here, the executive director of the, what's it called now? Sesquenet, yeah, okay. <laughs> the reason I forget is because I was the first chair of that group. It was the Lancaster York Heritage Region. So I'm not sure if this is better or not, but anyway, the, the, this is it's great to have you here. But, but Mark taught me that that one of the things, if if you really want to, while you live here, really appreciate what you have. And I grew up not too far from here. Uh, if you really want to appreciate it, was it John Weir who said, you need to have people from away come to visit. And when we do these state parks, we're going to have more people from out of town come to see what we have here in Pennsylvania. And I think Cindy's going to talk about this. Secretary Dunn's going to talk about this. But during the pandemic, we had more use of the state parks, outdoor recreation, than, than ever. And that just has continued to increase as more and more people recognize the wonders of, of Pennsylvania's great outdoors. But we, we do have a lot. We're a beautiful state. We have a diverse and, and unique natural areas or bountiful forests. I mean, Penn's Woods, that's what we're named for. Uh, the Susquehanna River behind me, the Delaware River, the Delaware Water Gap, the bre breathtaking depths of the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. When I was a kid, I used to take the, those yellow rafts down the Grand Canyon in the spring. There is no more beautiful area in the world. Uh, we have shores of Lake Erie. You know, that's our Riviera. We don't have any coastline on, on either ocean, but we don't need it because we have one of the greatest freshwater parks in the entire world, up in Erie, uh, Presque Isle. Um, we have the peaks of the Appalachian and Pocono Mountains. We, we really have it all. I love New England, it's beautiful, but I would take going across, is it Route 6? Going across Northern Pennsylvania in the mountains up there to any place anywhere in the world. Um, I have an uncle, by the way, who, who traveled all over the world, uh, and he swears that Lomond Farms, looking down to the Susquehanna Gorge, is maybe the most beautiful site in the entire world. So we have it all. And we're announcing today three new parks are going to be made possible by a $45 million investment. And the parks are going to be located in York County, Chester County, and Wyoming County. And so I said, what, 121 parks? We're now going to be 124 state parks all over the, the, the Commonwealth. And again, they're going to they're going to allow us to bring people to appreciate this kind of beauty. But they're also going to allow us to preserve our natural resources. The new park in Wyoming County will be the first site, the first state park developed in that county, and all three parks will help serve Pennsylvania's need for increased access to safe outdoor recreation. That's why we preserve and protect these natural resources. So we have made a $696 million investment in conservation, recreation, and preservation in this year's budget. And thanks to folks like Chairman Saylor, we, we actually have been able to do this in a way that we haven't in the past. I see former state representative Kevin Schreiber here, and, and when you were in the state house, we couldn't do this kind of stuff. 
we now have the funds to, to do this. Uh, and, and so the $696 million is going to be an investment that's really going to be, uh, I think, well, well done. This is going to help investment. Uh, this investment is going to help communities all across the Commonwealth, and it's going to help DCNR do what it does best, and, and that is showcase what we have here in Pennsylvania. So, here comes the bragging. We've uh, and my administration has opened more state parks than any since the late 1960s, early 70s. Um, but this is a big step forward for our state parks, and I'm deeply honored to have played a role in expanding them. Uh, this is going to help us benefit Pennsylvanians for generations. This is not something that's just a one-time great thing. People are going to be able to enjoy what we have here in Pennsylvania for generations to come. So I want to thank Cindy Dunn, Secretary Dunn, and all the great people who work in the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Uh, they have done an amazing thing in making this project possible, but also in managing and keeping up what we need to do with all of our state parks all around the Commonwealth. So, Cindy, thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Cindy Dunn. <clears throat> and speaking of thanks, this would not be here if it weren't for the great work of the Lancaster Conservancy. So I am very, very proud. I know I'm your county and you're Lancaster. You might think that's the Susquehanna River, right? But if you grew up in your county or Lancaster County, that's the Susquehanna Ocean, okay? <laughs> Just, just saying. But the Lancaster Conservancy has done so much to make this a re reality, and I want to thank Phil Wenger, the CEO and president of the Lancaster Conservancy. Phil. Thank you, Don. Good to see you. Well, we go from 124 state parks to talking about York County and the Lancaster Conservancy. So the Lancaster Conservancy has been working in this landscape for the last 53 years. We take the same impulse that National Parks and State Parks does by identifying places that are so perfect for protection. Scenic landscapes, waterfalls, natural areas that should not be developed but be, should be protected for everyone. And so over the last 53 years, we've been working diligently to find those places, acquire them, and open them to the public. And in those 53 years, we've protected over 10,000 acres. Woo. But we're in a unique place here in this landscape it is called the Susquehanna Riverlands Conservation Landscape, and it was formed 12 years ago by the partners, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, the Susquehanna National Heritage Area, the counties of York and Lancaster, and the Conservation Fund. And they said that these municipalities along the Susquehanna River, between York and Lancaster, are critically important to protect. And they asked the Conservancy to take the lead in identifying the properties that need to be protected. And so we have gone to work in those 12 years. We have acquired land in Lancaster and York County. In fact, we've added over 5,000 acres in those 12 years to land that has been protected and open to the public. This conservation landscape, though, takes that big view and tries to work with private property owners and other public landowners to make for sure that this is protected. So let's come down one other level here to the Hellam Hills. We got involved in the Hellam Hills 2016 when the Marietta Gravity Water Company was selling 700 acres. Anybody that's driven Furnace Hills Road, you know, between Mount Wolf and Wrightsville knows that the signs were up for years, 700 acres, multiple uses for development. Some of that land was actually even subdivided into housing, lots. The Conservancy stepped in and said, this land is so important, it includes reservoirs, it includes the bluff above Wildcat Falls, that this land should be protected. And so with the help of the Conservation Fund, we borrowed money we didn't have, and we bought it, and we opened it to the public. And since 2016, we've added seven other tracks. We've added Wizard Ranch. We've added the land around Wildcat Falls. And we began to eye this property. This property is 1,000 over 1,000 acres, nearly 1,100, owned by the same family for generations. 
And we decided that this would be a good opportunity to seek the information of whether they would consider protecting this land. Those conversations began two years ago with the sellers of this. All of the road you drove in on, all 850 acres of woodland is on this property. There is a mile of the Susquehanna River down here with beautiful rocks that outcrop that you can see when you're boating the river that is on this property. There's a 1.3 miles of the Cadoris Gorge on this property. So the Conservancy said we need to protect this property and we worked diligently to put it under agreement. And at that point, state parks came to us, even though we were applying for grants, public funding to help us acquire this, they said, we think this should be a state park. And so that's how we ended up being here today. And I just wanted you to sort of understand that story. But the Hellam Hills has been really critical. And we've got great partners here in York County and in Hellam Township that have helped this become a reality. We welcome state parks today. We think our board is just delighted and thrilled that state parks is gonna be able to come in here and have this property be conserved, have it be restored and open to the public. I need to shout out some of the partners that have helped out in this landscape. I know we're not supposed to do it, but the National Park Service is here in force today. They have been critical in asking Pennsylvania to step up and conserve these lands. We have the National Heritage Area that's here, Mark Platts and his team. We work together. They tell the stories, we protect the land. We end up having York County here represented in force, Commissioner Hoke and those folks. The planning and outdoor recreation folks in York County have helped give us the momentum and the energy to make these kinds of things happen. And of course, we have Representative Gillespie who's here, and we have the Hellam Township supervisors who believe that what we have here in Hellam Township is unique all over the Commonwealth. But our greatest thank goes to Secretary Dunn and Governor Tom Wolf. Dunn's team on the ground here has been exceptional. I will tell you, Lori Yike, if you don't know her, she works tirelessly in this conservation landscape. She makes sure all the public grants go to the right users, makes sure that there's a fair playing field. She reports up through Tom Ford, who's the bureau chief. Everybody on the DCNR team is exceptional. The grant making they do is competitive. We compete all across the Commonwealth, but they work with our team at the Conservancy to build out this landscape. And I just need to tell you today that the state parks coming in and acquiring this property gives us the momentum to expand our natural lands protection in this landscape. And we aren't done by any means. In fact, we're just getting started. This wooded gorge that the governor just talked about, that view down from Lomont Farms, down through the river, the view from here up to Three Mile Island, this land is so precious and the population growth is so strong that we need to step in now and protect it. And our future generations, 100 years from now, are gonna look back at the work that we've done here together with state parks, with our public funders, with the private land trusts and the private donors who fund our work and say, you guys looked into the vision, you looked into the future and you protected this land and we'll be so glad that we did. So with that said, I'm gonna introduce Secretary Dunn. I can't tell you anybody finer who is a cabinet secretary in this administration. I love working with you, Cindy. That's mutual, and this is what a great day. I mean, this is a, a momentous day. A day I think uh, those of us here will remember the rest of our lives. I want to thank sure. Governor Wolf for this incredible opportunity to serve. And as a as a as a governor, he asked the cabinet secretary to go go forward and serve the public every day, and empowers us to do that in the best way we know how. And for DCNR, this represents the best way we know how. So thank you, Governor, for that opportunity, and we really appreciate it. Um, I've got to just say how, how proud I am of uh, my visionary and smart leadership team at DCNR, our state park staff on the ground who will be stewards of this wonderful space, our Susquehanna Riverlands team that Phil so eloquently described at all levels, all bureaus, the folks that have maintained and stored this, our smart scientists, our smart uh, on the ground maintenance staff. We really, um, I'm really proud of everybody. Uh, we're a very much a public service agency and we were called to serve in a way uh, we had not been challenged in, in our careers during the COVID pandemic. People voted with their boots and their sneakers uh, to come outdoors, to come to parks, to come to trails, to come to forests. We, we knew we were essential. We just didn't realize how essential. 
People needed the uh, physical health break, the mental health. People needed to go somewhere with family, and people needed to get away from their family. And for all those reasons, <laughs> people flocked outdoors. We saw 47 million visits. I mean, think, this is a state of 13 million people. So to see 47 million individual visits in 2020 is remarkable. That shows how, uh, how much of an outdoor state uh, Pennsylvania really is. And we're seeing a sustained uh, 42 million uh, visits per year. And, and for those uh, retirees from DCR here, you'll know how, how big that number is compared to the past. So what does that mean in terms of service? You know, when, um, when, when uh, John Hallis talked about the need and how the memories are made at state parks, you know, I can, you know, I can just recall my life and, and thinking about different stages, you know, six-year-old with my grandma at a park and my, my very formal grandma in her gingham dress and apron. She put an apron to serve a picnic, you know, and my dad taking us to parks and getting married at a park. And, you know, there's all these other things in life, uh, I guess, that are considered really important. But the things I remember are actually time spent in a park. And as, as John said, uh, these are unifying places. There's no more democratizing place in the landscape of Pennsylvania than a state park. It's where we see kids playing who are from families different than us and realize we're all people. It's where people come together and, and have a great time and see each other at play, see each other in more relaxed places where differences don't seem so important. It's where people can look at a map and know you are welcome here. A state, this state park will, I tell you, this state park will pull people traveling from Canada to Florida in their, uh, in their winter vacation. They'll pull them in and they'll spend some time and they'll stay in this area. Nothing returns uh, to the economy better than public land. Every dollar spent in a state park returns $12 to the state's uh, coffers. So that investment, that return on investment is pretty amazing. It, it really does pay. You could make the economic case alone for the value of state parks. And so uh, working with Phil's team in this incredible uh, lower Susquehanna, you know, Susquehanna Riverlands landscape, working with Mark Platts and his team and our staff, this is one of the most remarkable places in the whole East Coast. This whole lower Susquehanna Gorge, you know, as the governor so eloquently said, um, it's, it's just an amazing place. It's easy to take for granted uh, when, when people see it every day, maybe cross a bridge every day, but it's remarkable. It is our Chesapeake Bay. There's a lot said about protecting Chesapeake Bay. This is about protecting our Chesapeake Bay. This is the place we go to recreate. This is the place uh, where the clean water is so important to us every day, and people get to see it, enjoy it, uh, and drink it, in fact. Um, this, deep and, this deep and rich partnership has led to uh, a gift that will keep giving to Pennsylvanians. You know, stay tuned. As Phil, Phil Wenger's very capable team said, there's more land to be conserved here. When you think of the, the Lancaster York Metro, and really it's half an hour from the Harrisburg West Shore Metro, uh, we're within a, a, a half an hour drive of a lot of people needing outdoor recreation. And really, we're not far from the Baltimore Washington uh, Wilmington Metro either. And so to have an asset like this it really uh, asks us to step up and provide more and to provide more depth and stories about the culture, stories about the history, more recreation, more paddling, more hiking, you know, more hunting, more fishing, more everything, more kayaking, more boat rides. I mean, it's, uh, it's a place that has a lot of growth in the conservation recreation world yet to come. But today represents an important step in that, that growth of this asset to serve so many people in need of this outdoor recreation close to home. As, um, as the governor said, we're announcing three parks today. Every single one of them is in response uh, to places we saw an increased need. Our parks in the uh, eastern half of Pennsylvania became overcrowded. You know, the saddest uh, day our uh, staff face is when a ranger has to turn around a van load of kids ready to get into a park, coolers packed, the floaties are in the back, kids are in the swimsuit, parks full got to turn around. How sad is that? that? That's a sad day for us in, in the eastern part of the state. We have to do it every summer. Um, so we saw the need in every one of these parks is within half an hour of a metro that really has a need. Fossburg Neck um, will be up uh, visiting on Thursday. is an incredible place. You can see Vosburg Neck. You know, from my desk, I have a map um, on the wall that's probably uh, 15 feet away. I can see the Vosburg neck from my desk. It's that remarkable of a geologic feature in the Susquehanna. And it's an easy drive from the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton metro area because of a, of a road going up through that way. So it's an easy way to get to outdoors 
for the people in the, the Wyoming Valley. Pretty remarkable. Um, our Big Elk Creek New State Park is an amazing place as well. It borders um, Fairhill Park in Maryland, so it creates an 8,000 acre public open space that we've gained over time with help from the Conservation Fund and other partners. But it's a remarkable part of Chester County under incredible development pressure. Uh, if, if it wouldn't be for the conservation efforts from our conservation partners down there, that uh, would not be available to the public. Big Owl Creek's an interesting place. Um, we were using uh, temporary marker names uh, for these places until the stories and the uh, public planning process develops. But the Big Owl Creek, when you think about, uh, we've got about a mile and a half of Mason-Dixon line on that park. That was a goalpost to freedom seekers, people escaping enslavement, Harriet Tubman and others bringing uh, escapees up the creeks and rivers into that milepost, the Mason-Dixon line. And uh, Big Owl Creek was one of those streams. And they walked in the streams because they could evade uh, the dogs uh, chasing them. So stories to be told at Big Owl Creek and these other places that are pretty, pretty remarkable. These places uh, need to be in public hands. These places need to be a state park so the stories can be developed and the, and, and the interpretation can happen and trails develop. So you can walk on those same trails yourself and understand those stories. The Lenape Indians traveled that same route for hunting and fishing grounds in Chesapeake Bay up into Pennsylvania. Big Elk's interesting. It goes right into Chesapeake Bay without going into the Susquehanna. It's the easternmost watershed in Pennsylvania. Uh, so it goes into a Big Elk, you know, Elk Neck State Park in Maryland it, 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 where it dumps into the bay. So pretty interesting and from a water quality side as well. Um, Lots of stories to tell about this. I'm going to just uh, say one more thing. If you uh, switch your view of these parks and uh, take a view from the water, they're pretty interesting as well. The Susquehanna River is uh, the east coast of the United States' largest river. It's a remarkable asset. When you think about it as a, a recreational asset for fishing and paddling and, and just uh, you know dipping in the water and seeing it, it's, it's about a mile wide in some places, and it's 445 four miles long, 270 of that in Pennsylvania. So if you just think about that ribbon of recreation, I mean, there's all kinds of other ways to look at it, but as a ribbon of recreation, it's remarkable. Um, this is at mile 50. If you, if you count up from Chesapeake Bay, the way river miles are counted, you know, zeros where it, it goes in the bay, and this is mile 50 here at the mouth of the Cadoras. Vosburgh's at 222, Vosburgh Neck State Park, uh, and, the, and the river goes on to 444 at Cooperstown, New York, and Lake Otsego. So it's interesting, um, you know, to think about adding an asset on the Susquehanna, which opens up that recreational asset to people. So the access here will be through the Cadoras Creek, uh, and we have about a, a mile or mile and a half of the Cadoras waterfront on this park as well. Looking at Cadoras, go way upstream in Cadoras, Cadoras State Park. That's that's the lake that. Uh, you know, that we uh, we manage as a state park. Cadoras flows down through right in the city of York where Kevin and uh, Silas and uh, the governor and others are restoring that incredible asset for the citizens of York to have a out the back door recreational opportunity, a place to fish, cleaner water, etc. On down to the white water feature here uh, on the lower Cadoras that'll be part of the state park. So Having this spot on the ground as a state park opens up miles and miles and miles of other recreation for fishermen and, and boaters and waders and just, uh, you know, riverside, streamside enjoyment. So these are like uh, portals to even even more recreation and outdoors. It's pretty incredible. Um, anyway, it's it's a great day. I could go on. I, I just want to uh, say thank you to uh, to all of our partners that make this possible. Thank you to the governor for giving us the ability to do this, to, to proposing your budget. And then finally, I want to thank the legislature for their role in, in allowing this to happen. Before I introduce Stan Saylor, I just want to say a word about uh, Keith Gillespie. I don't know if Keith is still here. He's going up to elk viewing today. Uh, he's a chair of uh, Fish and Game in the House. And he's also been an avid supporter, a member of the Chesapeake Bay Commission and uh, instrumental in the governor's proposed uh, 700 million for the environment, which is an amazing investment in the environment, the best investment in 15 years. Uh, Keith really uh, kept an eye on the, the details of how that money 
on the ag sector has to be applied for best management practices. And a big supporter of Chesapeake Bay. So thanks, Keith, and have a, uh, have a great elk viewing. Uh, turning to Stan Saylor, as uh, chair of House Appropriations, uh, St you know, Stan uh, led the governor's proposal through, uh, through the House and understood the importance of DCNR's place in that, understood that state parks are a return on investment to the citizens from the appropriations angle. Uh, from his work on tourism, he understood uh, the value to tourism that a state park brings. So with that, um, let me introduce Chairman Saylor. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here today. Uh, you know, as a kid growing up here in York County as a farm boy, you know, and farm boys don't have a lot of money, kind of, our, our vacations are usually to state parks. I have memories as a child going to Sam Lewis State Park and climbing on the rocks and playing ball, or going during the summers to Pinchot State Park and going swimming, or going up to Clinton County to one of the state parks up there where some of my family lives. You know, you don't have to have a lot of money to go to a state park. This is a place where you can enjoy families and do all kinds of family activities from picnicking to hiking to all kinds of things. And more importantly, you know, in Pennsylvania, tourism is our second leading industry out behind agriculture, which brings a lot of money into this state. And I want to thank Commissioner Hoke, Treasurer Barbara Bear, who uh, particularly Barb and Mark Platts, who have beaten on me for years <laughs> and years about conserving our, our land and our parks and historic sites here in York County. And Commissioner Hoke, for your commitment as well to York County and its, its environmental uh, improvements that you've been making as well. You know, it is so critical. You know, I met with the EPA administrator, met with some of the people from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, and they were just thrilled about what the governor and Cindy and, and everybody's been doing that's been a part of this. And so, I'm going to keep this short. I just want to come here and say thank you, because this will mean a lot to a lot of people, not just here in York County, but throughout this state and around this country. I'd have this opportunity to have a park overseeing the beautiful Susquehanna River is just amazing to me, and I cannot be more thrilled. I actually have dreamed about this for many years. And now it's going to come to fruition because I think mean, Barb Bear and Mark Platts and I have talked about having a park right here on the Susquehanna River in York County. But I, I also don't want to leave without saying thank you to Phil Wanger, the governor, and Cindy Dunn, and everybody in the park system. You know, these kind of things don't just happen. They don't just pop up. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to get these kind of things done. And, and I just love Cindy Dunn. I mean, Cindy has just been an amazing secretary of DCNR. I think one of the best in many, many years. So Cindy, thank you for your leadership. You've been amazing. And to Phil Wanger, who has been working for many, many years. I don't know how many, Phil, but I won't mention because of your age. But uh, seriously, Phil has been dedicated to our communities for many years and doing so much work. I mean, again, the leadership that he offers and the time and the commitment that he takes to our community uh, is not just an hour a week or something like that. It's a lot of work. And Phil, thank you for your dedication to our community, our, our environment and everything else. And last but not least, of course, is the thanks to Governor Wolf, who also had a dream of making this happen. And it takes leadership at the top to make these kind of things happen. We in the legislature can have dreams and we can work on things, but in the end, it takes a real leader uh, in the governor's office or even as a president to get things done. And Tom, I, I want to say thank you for your hard work and your dedication, not only to make this work, but also all you've been doing to improve the environment here in Pennsylvania. Thank, thank you, you and God bless all of you. Now for the tough questions, I want to welcome back to Governor Wolf. <laughs> As usual, I'll moderate the questions and they'll answer them. So anybody have any questions? Yeah. Talk about the process to get here as far as uh, the family that donated, I could say, Ravonna remained anonymous, but kind of what the, the state investment here is. Yeah, let me... <laughs> Thank you. Let me bring Secretary Dunn back up here. <laughs> Thank you. We expect our investment in this park to be about $20 million between acquiring the land from the, from the owner as well as uh, building the infrastructure in the park. And we'll start a uh, 
master planning process with staff to uh, get get the local sense of what they feel is needed. We'll look at this whole matrix of the landscape, see what's missing. Again, we have other other assets in the region, see what amenities people want here. I think, uh, you know, hiking goes without saying, of course, the bathroom goes without saying, right? Some sort of visitors contact. And overnight, uh, this area does lack overnight. So we'll explore that possibility as well. So we, we estimate 20 million uh, from this budget for this park. Do you have a time frame as that, like how long a build out will take? It could take a couple of years. The planning process will begin immediately. And then uh, we, you know, we'll, we'll start building out the amenities uh, as soon as we can. That the trails can come uh, sooner than than any buildings, of course. We'll try to get a restroom facility up, you know, as fast as we can. Obviously, that's needed uh, right away. And and all three parks uh, are, are available for people to to come and walk on and see. You know, they're they're um, in this case uh, we're, we're ready to go and have people come visit, take a look. Um, Big Elk uh, is a public lands right now, and then Vosburg, our, our conservation partner up there, is another land trust similar to this. They allow public access, so people can uh, kind of come and see them right away, so get a sense of them. It's open. It'll be. It's open uh, starting today, and the amenities will take a while to develop. But uh, you can walk on the public land and and view it. There's a overlook, you know. That way, the governor uh, described eloquently this Shoals Overlook. Um, you want to explain how that overlook works, and you can see the sunset from a east-facing overlook. Yeah. Well, Phil has a house down here, but if if you go down on the York County, the western bank of the Susquehanna, uh, at the right time, you actually see the sunset on the eastern bank of the Susquehanna River. Which is amazing on the Susquehanna. That's pretty amazing. Come on, that's pretty big. Uh huh. <laughs> Doesn't happen everywhere. <laughs> you did, did, did Cindy ask, answer your question? Yeah, the last thing I wanted to know is, do you anticipate any changes in the roads coming in or access points? Yeah, so, yeah the, the road, the road uh, yeah, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, the road access, uh, you make it wider, you know, it has to be wide enough for two vehicles, uh, emergency vehicles, all that. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much, Cindy. Thank you again, and everyone. Thank you for doing this. You can unveil the sign. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's time to unveil the sign. Okay. Oh, we're unveiling the sign. Okay. Yes, we are. All right. We're gonna move this out of the way. We're sort of secondary to this, but yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Let me uh, let me get this. You and I doing this. And who's on this, John? How? Are you guys are. Is it? Is I, I think two. Uh, we can we can each get on the side. And yeah. Yeah. On each okay. okay. Yeah. On that side. No, no, you stay now. Okay. You stay okay. out front. Yeah. All right. Stay out front. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, I have no idea how to do it. So we're gonna. We have. To, you have clips on that side. Yeah. Unclip so it. Clip it. Unclip it, gentlemen. If you can grab. And I'm gonna pull it. Portion of the fabric, and we're gonna pull it back and away. Ready? Okay. 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 All right. Add to that legacy. We've secured funding to create three new state parks, which brings the total during my administration to four state parks. But Mark taught me that that one of the things, if, if you really want to 
why you live here, really appreciate what you have. And I grew up not too far from here.